Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about documentation. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, why is it that programmers seem to never write any documentation? Well, almost nobody writes documentation because documentation is uh, something that you write for other people. And the average person is a lazy bum who only cares about themselves and their own comfort usually. Um, that is my experience at the very least. The reason why this is usually true is, as I said, because once you know how something works, why would you think about sustainability for other people? It's sort of the whole problem with the environment and uh, you know the economy and poverty and class differences and all that stuff because you are fine. So now you can focus on things that matter to you because there's always something else up for you that is more important to you than to do the thing that is probably best for everybody else and some people think they they can make up ex tons of excuses everything from that well the documentation is in the code well yeah if you wrote the code and if you understand it and if that is the way that you absorb information the easiest and you actually sort of understand it once again it's sort of like a teacher saying that to a student that well you don't understand because you're stupid you're sort of creating a situation where you you seem to not realize that as the person who is relaying information and as the person as absorbing of information well it's sort of difficult to say that one uh, that uh, one is exclusively responsible for the situation versus another. It's sort of like this, you know, who has the greater responsibility? Can we find a way to communicate effectively? And this is unfortunately one of those situations where, at least I claim, there's no, there, it's nobody's fault. Because you could be the world's best teacher, for example, and you will still not be able to teach, I don't know, higher mathematics to a toddler. And you could be the smartest human being alive and the, like the most enthusiastic person ever and really want to learn. But if the teacher speaks in a language, a foreign language to you, it's going to be very difficult for you to absorb the knowledge that, that person has. And it's the same thing with documentation. If you write a book of a manual for how to do things and the person that is supposed to absorb the information doesn't understand the way that you write or doesn't feel find it intuitive or something like that your documentation is pointless the information isn't relayed and you can absolutely like you know dust your hands off and hold up your hands and say well I did my part I wrote the documentation and I go yeah but they didn't understand it so how do we fix that problem and so many people always do this thing that I find so annoying which is that uh, you look at the action of what you're doing as some type of proof that you have done uh, your part and then it becomes a discussion of not if we have a s good solution to this problem but can you personally be blamed can you personally be responsible for that this thing didn't work out as intended and then the ass covering starts and like the finger pointing and like all this sort of stuff or like oh but so surely somebody else has to be responsible and I kind of go sure they could but the real question should really be, in my opinion, are you capable? Are you the most capable person here to fix this problem, to help us fix this problem? Why don't you? Why do you have to think in terms of, oh, what's fair? Or what should you have to do and what should everybody else have to do? If you are the person who has the ability, why look to somebody else? You can fix this. Is it like it's this weird selfish behavior and that is as I said it really comes down to laziness usually and uh, self-interest why most programmers don't write documentation uh, another reason can which is fair to a point is that documentation is one of those things that requires maintenance but in my opinion that's sort of again like the it's the same problem, right? You can create bad documentation that is very difficult to keep up to date because you basically you spread it across and like you don't have a good strategy for how to deal with your documentation. And it's actually very difficult, even if you try to keep it up to date, it changes so often or like it's like you forget about it, you can't find it, etc. So there are benign reasons, right? And 
that is not a good situation either and people try to avoid that because they don't want to maintain documentation for once again the same damn reason they're lazy bums and I have a lot of those say I rather I've worked with a lot of those and so the way that I try to tell people at least this has worked really well for me, is that you have to think about documentation in, from different perspectives. There are There is documentation that changes almost all the time, and there's documentation that changes almost never. But the most common reason why you want to have documentation is to give a person who doesn't actually know how to do something and will need to know how to do that thing in order to progress. That is something that you have to document. And so that is something that usually comes down to your understanding of, as I like, you know, I've said this a million times, you have to understand the problem that you are solving. So an example for me, which I think is very good documentation that there is really no excuse for not having in any software team is an onboarding guide. Because when you have a new hire, you can make the, you can talk about time investment. You can talk about all these things. But as an example, in one of the teams that I've had, we had like it took it took up to two days to onboard one individual because we had so many access rights that needed to be set up, the accounts, and like talking to different um, other teams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that I wrote an onboarding guide. The first person that I helped onboard took over two weeks. And the reason was because I could simply not sit with them non-stop and hold their hand. After that first person, we wrote down all the steps, all the people that that person had to talk to in order to get like their entire workflow and like all the access rights and all the things that they needed set up. And then we hired, I think, more seven more people. I didn't have basically have to do anything. So the time it took me to write down the steps that I took in order to get everything done was equal to one onboarding process. And I saved six other uh, six other trips of doing the same thing. Because had I not, I would have had to sit with these people. In this case, I was the team lead. I would have to sit through with them. So it actually saved a lot of time. And then all we did was to create a like a rotation and this is nothing something this is I mean this is logistics 101 or bathroom cleaning 101 in a restaurant you set a time frame where every certain amount of time units in my case it's once a month a person goes and reviews that document that shows all the steps you have to take and just make sure that they still are correct and that all the links and everything is working and then they put their name at the end saying that yeah we reviewed this at the this 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 and this time and then you go on with your day it takes almost no time whatsoever to maintain such a document but it's enormously useful and the same thing goes for a lot of different guides and you know these sorts of as I call them like the repeatable things that you have to do you have to do them on uh, uh, on certain time at certain times but you don't really do them so often that you can sort of always remember exactly how to do it these things you write down in very simple to follow step guides and ideally adding a few images can help and so forth and so forth but this is sort of the sort of documentation that is actually extremely useful and it makes all the difference and it causes it causes almost no it's almost no work for the team to maintain this it's just that you as as i said you you have to get out of your get off your f fucking lazy ass and think about a little bit more of a holistic picture than you know, I know how it works, and they can just ask me because that is, as I say, this is what I call stupid behavior. Imagine if we had that approach to everything, like laws and other things. It's it's not going to work. It's just that, unfortunately, a lot of people are very lazy. So what I want you to take away from this is that people, or programmers, don't write documentation for the same reason why your boss doesn't write down things why you uh, why your coworkers at your job probably don't like uh, you know write down how to use the coffee machine that is very sophisticated etc etc people are lazy and as soon as they know how to do the thing and it's not blocking them in any meaningful way uh, they usually don't care about or and think about other people that this could be useful for other people and the reality is that that's probably not going to go away the thing that I tell people is that if you are in a, in a situation like myself, for example, where your time is going to have to be invested into something 
and if you don't write down things, if you are responsible for the team, for example, it's a very good investment for you to make documentation for these common tasks that if you don't teach them this, they won't be able to do it, but they need to be able to do it to do the job. And all you have to do is to get, write down a few of these sort of step guides and then you can crowdsource it to the, everybody. Like you can have a monthly schedule. Guys, the fast food industry and cleaning toilets and like the military and logistics, they have done this. It's called inventory. They do this on like all the time. It's like 101 for them to go and do like a checkup and do like uh, test like uh, um, check different uh, at different t time intervals just do a, a, a check of what the inventory is so like what the status is of the bathrooms etc etc status checks it's very easy to do you just put a reminder in your calendar and then someone like you do ideally do it on a rotation or something first it's you then it's the next person the next person and then you just rotate and that's all there is to it and you can maintain world-class documentation that's going to save you I don't know how many hours of unnecessary back and forth and um, re reteaching and re-showing people uh, if you just do this and it's actually really really simple have a great day